Today we're going to discuss the use of 3D Curve. 3D Curve is a freestyle curve tool, meaning you are free from constraints as far as applying uh, constraints within the context of a sketch or onto a surface or from one curve to the next. The freestyle workbench contains several tools that allow you to, I guess, the best way to describe, freely create geometry without the constraints of adjoining or adjacent geometry. In this case, 3D Curve is an extremely powerful tool with various ways of creating curves. The first method I'm going to discuss, slightly out of order, is control points. Now the control points method allows you to create a curve based off of the control polygon of the curve. What you're actually drawing are the vertices of the control polygon that control the shape of the curve. In this case, the default plane that we're going to draw on is based off of the compass. In this case, it's the XY plane of the compass. That's by default. I'm going to click on the Z axis. That way, I'm gun sighting down the Z axis down to the XY plane. Now, I can begin to freely draw my curve, point to point to point. You'll notice that I am drawing the actual control vertex of the curve. When I get to the end of the curve, I'm going to double click to finalize that curve. Now, if I come in and begin modifying this curve, I can double click on it. You'll note that I have the ability to change the shape by moving the location of the control point for any of the intermediate points as well as any of the endpoints. So we are no longer constrained by having to enter in a specific parameter value. We are free to move these points anywhere we want and because of the way it's created these points will remain locked to the XY plane. I'm going to draw another 3D curve. This time I only have three control points. You'll notice that this draws basically a conic. Now that I have my two curves in place, I'm going to create one more 3D curve. But this curve that I'm going to create is going to bridge the gap between the two previous curves. I'll select on my 3D curve function. And when I go to draw, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the endpoint. You'll notice the little red circle that appears over the endpoint. This is telling me it's going to constrain my next curve to the endpoint of this line. I select, and I'm going to come out and select again. And you'll notice this time I have a constraint at this endpoint. It's specifying its point continuity. If I right mouse click over this constraint, you'll notice that point continuity is all I have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out and I'm going to select again. Now that I have an additional control point, if I right mouse click over this point continuity, you'll notice I have tangent continuity. If I select on tangent, this vector now is locked in and is always tangent to this curve. If I come in and select another point, you'll note if I go back over to this constraint and right mouse click, I can specify curvature continuity. So now this curve defines the slope. This curve, or I apologize, this control vertex defines the radius, locking in my curvature continuity at this end. I'm going to come over here and select again, select again, and then come to this endpoint and select again. You'll notice I have a point constraint. I'm going to right mouse click and I can jump all the way down to curvature. I can specify curvature because I have enough of these control points here to give me my curvature continuity. Now what I want you to notice is 
at a minimum, I need three control points to gain curvature continuity. Three control points to gain curvature continuity. You'll see here, I have an extra control point somewhere in the middle. This is perfectly free to roam wherever it wants. It is not controlled by this constraint that is applied at this endpoint. In this case, I don't want this extra point, so I'm just going to simply right mouse click over the top of it and say remove this point. Now, I have a curve that's curvature continuous to both ends that I'm able to modify using my control points. I'm going to select OK. Now, I'm going to double click on the first curve that I drew in. I'm going to modify this and you'll notice the curve remains constrained appropriately. If I analyze this curve, I'm using my porcupine curvature analysis. I'm going to increase the amplitude. I'm going to increase the density. You'll note that the green envelope curve is telling me that this is truly a curvature continuous condition between all those curves. I'm going to select OK. If I double click on this curve and I remove the curvature and I bring this back down to tangent, you'll note that the green envelope curve is broken, thus resulting in this case, as you can see, a tangent continuity. I can also revert this back to a point continuity and now this allows me to move this control point completely free because it's no longer constrained. I can right mouse click once again, shoot back up to curvature continuity, and now I'm back to being curvature or perfectly smooth across this boundary. And those are the basics behind 3D freestyle curve control point.